In this video, I want to talk about how we can actually represent models and data in factor analysis. And in order to talk about this, I'm going to use the same example which we talked about in the last video, where we have four observed factors, and these observed factors here are things like insomnia, suicidal thoughts, hyperventilation, and nausea. And these are data which we've collected from a sample of individuals. So the idea is that we could think about each of these respective variables as being represented by a vector. And that vector would then be y1, y2, y3, and y4, say. And the idea here is that the vector y1 is a vector of the values of some sort of measure of insomnia across our sample of n individuals. So the idea is that the first component would be y1 for the first person, so that's y11, the second one would be y1 for the second person, all the way through to the value of y1 for the nth person. And you can simply think about this in analogy for all the other terms. So then we'd have that y4 would be a vector of observations for the measure of nausea. So that would take on the value of y41, y42, and then all the way through to y4n. There are essentially two ways to think about representing models in factor analysis. The first way which I'm going to talk about is that of a vector of equations. And the idea with this particular formalism is that you sort of forget about the fact that y1 through y4 represents actually a vector of observations for individuals, and you just think about the equations on their own. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, essentially what we can say is we can say that there are two unobserved factors, depression, which I've written here as eta1, and anxiety, which I've called it eta2. And we can think about y1 as being determined in kind of a linear regression form of some sort of weighting, lambda11, which corresponds to this first red arrow here, times the value of eta1 plus lambda 1 2 which is represented by this first blue arrow here on the left the one here indicating that it's the first observed variable insomnia the two indicating that it's coming from the second unobserved latent variable and then we have to multiply this lambda 1 2 by eta 2 and finally we add to that equation epsilon 1 which represents the unique variance of y1 and the idea with the vector of equations form is that we can essentially write down this kind of regression formula for each of the observed characteristics. So we can write y4 is equal to lambda 41, where lambda 41 actually corresponds to this last red arrow. Lambda 41 here is because we are talking about the loading on the fourth observed characteristic, which is nausea, and we're talking about the loading of depression, which is the first unobserved variable. So then what we have to do is we have to multiply that by eta1 and then we have to add on our lambda 42 which corresponds to this last uh, blue arrow here. So lambda 42 is the weighting of anxiety on nausea so hence we have to multiply it by eta2 and then finally we add our unique variance for the observed characteristic nausea. So just to reiterate this part of each equation is that which is common to all the observed characteristics. So we often refer to this as communality. The epsilon term here is that which is unique to that specific factor. So the idea is that this is the proportion of the variance of the observed characteristic which is not due to the shared uh, unobserved factors. We're going to continue to talk about this way of representing models in the next video, and we're also going to introduce the other way of representing factor analysis models, which is a more sort of matrix interpretation of things.